walks onto stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am tonight's entertainment. Pauses. Spoilers. I am not sure how you can review The Dark Knight and not spoil it. Pauses. It is an epic. The best movie of the 21st century. To date. Feel free to better it. I am not sure if The Dark Knight was the best from the start or if extra care post-production. Due to the death of Heath Ledger. Made it that way. Pauses. Heath Ledger is said to have put a significant amount of effort into creating the character of the Joker. The Joker is Batman's negative image, it is implied, directly. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Pauses. The story starts with a prologue, and the Joker character is introduced as the mastermind behind the ongoing bank robbery. All the bank robbers wear unique clown masks. Each is ordered to murder their buddy in sequence as each specialized task is completed. Collapsing the number of shares after each task. Until there is one. This prologue might have been used for a whole film. Instead, it is used as an introduction to the main antagonist. The Joker. How decadent. Pauses. Only the bank robbers themselves are killed during the robbery. Leaving the Joker to pack the school bus and drive off with a mob's loot. The mob banker, injured during a brief shootout, asks the masked Joker. What do you believe in? After witnessing the slaughter and indulging himself in a short rant. The Joker removes his mask, revealing his clown face, and replies. I believe, whatever doesn't kill you, simply makes you. Stranger. The Joker pops a grenade into the mobster's mouth, trails a trip wire behind himself, and casually heads off. Pauses. This whole prologue suggests to the audience that the Joker is a confident master planner. Able to subdue civilians and criminals, and sees other criminals as consumables. Why did the Joker leave the mob banker alive after revealing his face? You might ask yourself if you are paying attention. Probably as a calling card. Pauses. The Joker offers his services as a Batman exterminator for hire. Here's my card. However, this service turns out to be a ruse. As the Joker ends up wanting to be the Batman's lifelong nemesis. Pauses. I don't want to kill you. You complete me. Smirks. Eliminating more of the competition in every scene. Getting closer and closer to the Batman. Until the end. Pauses. I have watched analysis of the characterization of the Joker. Many forget the Dark Knight is a story, a film, designed to entertain. Having said this, I think I can analyze the Joker far better than anyone else. As the Joker inhabits my world. A world of fiction. Pauses. Let me construct a far better narrative to the Joker, just for you. Far, far, better than any other. One worthy of Heath Ledger's epic performance. Smirks. One of the key flaws in people's analysis is about the Joker's scars. Do you want to know where I got these scars? None manage to comprehend that both of the scar stories are true. Rolls eyes. Are you all just apes, with sticks? Prodding down a hole for those tasty ants. Rolls eyes even more. Must I? In the first story, the Joker is a boy. He lives with his abused mother and father. Pauses. In the second story, it is his girlfriend who is disfigured. And because they cannot afford plastic surgery, the Joker disfigures himself. Pauses. Do you see a timeline now? The Joker's parents were rich enough to fix his face. As a dependent. In later life, the Joker and his girlfriend were not. The killing joke for the Joker was the initial disfiguration the Joker's father gave him. Was inescapable. Pauses. In physics, chaos, disorder, entropy is inevitable in a closed system. Rolls eyes. Now you know the backstory to the Joker's life. Son to a rich violent father who disowned him. Pauses. The Joker's skills suggests a higher education, possibly in the military. Given the Joker's knife and tactical skills. Although the Joker could have been self-trained to survive a hostile environment. Pauses. Most of the commentators on the Joker's character state or suggest the Joker is evil. Or the Joker is the bad guy. Counting the Joker's willingness to murder and his love for violence as a negative attribute. This is where the dog analogy comes in. I'm like a dog chasing cars. Pauses. Man's best friend when under control, according to society. Are dogs evil? Pauses. 
Maybe the Joker was looking for a suitable master. Somebody to control, learned violent behavior. This is certainly one role the Joker plays with his henchmen. Giving them purpose beyond the criminal world. None questioned the Joker burning the money pile. And only one mob boss ratted the Joker out. A leader of the pack. Pauses. Let's do a walk through the Dark Knight movie with call outs. Towards the end. We can all lose our heads. Smirks. The bank heist introduces the Joker's character to the audience. The henchmen self-terminate, one by one. With the Joker having nothing but fun, along the way. Robbing from the mob. Without fear of repercussion. As they have all lost their balls. After the heist. The Joker interrupts Lau. As he is telling the gangsters about the plan to protect their money. From the police. Who are in the middle of raiding the mobsters' banks. Someone should have asked themselves, did the Joker preempt Lau's plan? If so, how did the Joker know, the money was not safe? The Joker only does one magic trick. Throughout the whole movie. Which is probably for the best. Since the point was to illustrate that, an unarmed Joker, kills without warning. The mobster, whose henchman was killed, puts a contract out on the Joker. Pauses. Whilst the Joker is in the same room. Rolls eyes. Which quickly backfires. And the Joker gets to tell everybody how he got his scars. Interestingly, this is quickly followed by the second scar story. As the Joker attempts to acquire Harvey Dent at Bruce Wayne's fundraiser. You know, you remind me of my father. I hated my father. Pauses. Note the past tense. Most likely the Joker's father is dead. Puts on Dear Stalker. Given the Joker's ease with murder. The Joker's father was probably murdered by the Joker with a potato peeler. Smirks. Why else does the Joker carry a potato peeler around? Other than as a memento. Pauses. The Joker's attempt to kill the Batman as Harvey Dent is well planned. Yet performed in a comical manner. Pauses. This suggests to me that the post-production dramatized the whole movie. To give it gravitas. A fire truck that is on fire blocks the convoy's route. The Joker rides a lorry with, slaughter is the best medicine, written on the side. Pauses. The Joker's attempts to kill Harvey Dent are narrated constantly by the passenger in the prison transfer truck. At the end of the chase, the Joker confronts the Batman. Standing in the middle of the street. Come on, I want you to do it, I want you to do it. Come on, hit me. Hit me. Pauses. The Joker wants to be wrong about the Batman. Pauses. The Joker ends up in the police holding cell. Where the police concludes, the Joker is a nobody. To give the Joker an air of mystery. Rolls eyes. The Joker claps Gordon's promotion to commissioner. Pauses. It's not clear if the Joker meant to be caught or if the exploding cellmate was a contingency. The Joker's planning appears to be dominoes at pieces, prepared in case of possible outcomes. Rather than a sequence of fixed events. Pauses. Professional contingency planning, which appears as cascading dominoes. That's not flying, that's falling with style. Smirks. What the Batman does physically, the Joker does in mind. The cell scene illustrates this contrast perfectly. The Batman expects the Joker to be intimidated by his presence. Yet, all the Joker does is laugh harder with each blow as he mocks the Batman's impotence. The Joker explains that they share the same mindset. That they are the same. Pauses. I'm not a monster, I'm just ahead of the curve. The curve being, the relentless push towards disorder. The Joker's choice, to save Harvey Dent or Rachel Dent, I mean Dawes. Is a test of logic, which the Batman fails. The Batman's booby prize, is a new supervillain, Two-Face. Laughs maniacally. Pauses. All the Joker wanted was his phone call. Which was forthcoming, only after the Joker goads, and takes hostage, a corrupt cop. Using spare knife, number 9. It is on the Joker's escape, we see euphoria, as the Joker's dominoes fall, as one. The Joker's animal behavior, is again displayed. Pauses. The Batman makes it to his chosen destination in time. Only to discover the joke, was on him. And Two-Face is born. Smirks. The Batman could have stayed with the Joker, or taken the Joker along. The Batman, could have chosen to save Gotham, over his lost love. All of the possible outcomes suited the Joker. It was the Kobayashi Maru test, and the Joker was Spock. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. 
pauses. On to my favorite scene. Where the Joker only burns his half of the money. And Lao. Whilst feeding the Chechen boss to his own dogs. It's not about money. It's about sending a message. Pauses. And in this fictional reality, what exactly is? Pauses. The message. People suggest, it is that the Joker values chaos above everything. Why would, even fictional, criminals follow the Joker? Their motivation was money, and the mob had it. Now the mob does not have it, neither does the Joker. Plus, the Joker's retirement plan is, die before you retire. His wages, not being murdered. Today. Just saying. Pauses. The nurse Joker, is played straight. Waits for groan. With a Joker initially wearing a ginger wig. Do I look like a guy? With a wig. I mean, with a plan. The Joker, encourages Harvey Dent to embrace, his new persona. Two-Face. Using simple logic. Mind-numbing logic. Pauses. At this point, I expected the commentators to state that the Dark Knight is born. As they called Harvey Dent, the White Knight. The man who was to rescue Gotham from the darkness. Rather than plunge it further into darkness. Rolls eyes. Fun fact. They blew up a real hospital, for the Dark Knight movie. Not a real working hospital, you fucking idiot. They nearly blew Heath Ledger up, too. Pauses. Maybe that was why Heath Ledger had trouble sleeping. Post-traumatic stress. Anyway. With Two-Face loose, the Joker decides to add to the chaos. Calling for Bruce Wayne's employee to be killed. Bruce Wayne, accidentally saves this guy's life. Whilst running a red light. Do you think I need to go to the hospital? Rich playboys never ever watch the news. They are too busy fucking sex workers, and smoking crack. Pauses. The Joker reverts to the next set of dominoes. With two boats set to explode, using each other's detonator. This social experiment, is part of game theory, used to evaluate best outcomes in risk management. In addition, a busload of doctors and nurses are being held in the building, the Joker decided to use as his base, for the next level of, the Batman and Joker show. In the Joker's mind, one of the boats will explode, illustrating to the Batman, that the civilization, the Batman defense, is an illusion. The Batman decides to add to the Joker's chaos, by crashing his party. The Batman works out, that the hostages are the henchmen, and the henchmen are the hostages. Luckily, before any hostages are killed. On to the boss fight, with the Joker. The Joker fights, the Batman, off, with three dogs. Then waits for the boom. None of the people on the boats, know any game theory. And the Joker decides to demonstrate. Which is when the Batman gives, the Joker some more scars. The Joker falls to his death, laughing on his way down. Only to be saved by the Batman, before the Earth murders him. Smirks. At this point, the Joker informs the Batman of his creation. Two-Face. His ace, in the hurl. The Dark Knight ends, with the three heroes, discussing what shit went down, and who is to blame. Two-Face, is now a fully paid up member to the Cult of Chaos, and they agree to use the flip of a coin, to decide each other's fate, or else be killed for sure. More game theory. Once Two-Face is dead, the Batman and Gordon decide to blame everything on, the Batman. Rather than defame the dead. Because Gotham needs more dead people, to look up to. Smirks. The film ends with the Batman, being chased by the police, with police dogs. Pauses. The Dark Knight is a jam-packed movie, full of couplings and threesomes. The hero threesome of the Batman, Gordon and Dent, a secret brotherhood of heroes. The official hero threesome, replaces the Batman with Rachel. The relationship threesome, Harvey, Bruce and Rachel. The couplings, are many, with Bruce and Rachel, Rachel and Harvey, the Batman and the Joker, etc. As are the mirrorings, the Batman and Bruce Wayne, Two-Face and Harvey Dent, the Joker and Rachel Dawes. Smirks. Yes, they are reflections. Pauses. It is Harvey Dent who experiences the largest character arc, from hero, to zero in less than 30 minutes. Harvey Dent, had the girl and the job he wanted. Bruce Wayne was planning to give him even more. Harvey Dent, considered himself to be like the Batman. A symbol of law and order. Harvey even volunteered to be a lure. Mirroring the mobster in trial, willing to go to jail for the mob boss. At the end, Two-Face was willing to murder women, and children, on the flip of a coin. So much for law and order. Pauses. The Joker does laugh in the dark night. The laughter coincides with adrenaline rush events. 
the Joker's past is likely to have caused his fight or flight emotions to become tied to his funny bone. In opposition, death goes largely ignored. Weapons are used to complete tasks. And the Joker wills his own demise. Like a games player, maxed out on upgrades, bored with the ease of the game. Pauses. The new Joker movie places mental illness front and center. To the point where the whole movie could be considered the Joker's account of a delusion. Pauses. In The Dark Knight, the Batman uses lots of toys. The Batman's strength comes from investment in technology. As a billionaire, Bruce Wayne is spoiled for choice. Pauses. It may have been better if he had simply ensured his tax revenue was spent wisely. Preventing corruption and improving law and order rather than a bat signal and gadgets. The way in which the bat bike emerges from the wreck of the bat mobile is comical. Whilst the gadget is entertaining, its emergence was superfluous to the story. Pauses. How does a single grenade destroy a military-grade armored vehicle? Why would the military have a bike ejection seat? It would have made more sense if the Batman called it up as a replacement auto-drive bat bike. Rolls eyes. Anyway. The very concept of the Batman is comical, which is why the Batman is a comic book hero. Peace, I am out of here, word up. Exits stage left.